Hey, I'm Pep, and this is a Pep Talk. Now today, we're going to talk about co-op games, such as Pandemic, Mansions of Madness, the Pathfinder Adventure Card Game, or Dragonfire. Generally, a co-op game is played with a group of players, and you're all trying to complete the same goal. Now this might happen over the course of one game, it might be a campaign where your characters will grow and advance, but either way, generally you will win or lose together. And I want to do something a little strange and preface this entire video with, I don't really like most co-op games. Generally, it's not that I think the games are good or bad per se, it's more the, the feelings around the table whenever they're played. That being said, I'm not going to let that color this video. I want to make sure that I give you the best tips and advice for these type of games possible. Now the first piece of advice, and I think one of the most important, is to work with the playstyles of your group. Some people like to kick in doors and get into combat, others like to solve puzzles, and some like to explore rooms and try to find all the little secrets they can. Make sure that each player has a character that can really help them achieve that goal. Otherwise, you may have people that should be filling a certain role going off and doing something completely different. And in these kind of games, there's not a lot of room for error in most times. Touching on that a little more, you'll probably want to either generalize or specialize on a particular skill, depending on what co-op game you're playing. If you're playing one where there's only a few major skill checks that need to be done, it's probably good for you to specialize. If you have a character that focuses on strength, make sure that they have high strength. Make sure that if you find items that can boost strength, they flow towards that character. That way, when they need to encounter that obstacle, they will handily beat it. Now, other co-op games might go a different direction and have a lot of different skill checks or tasks that you need to complete, all of different types. In this case, it's really more important to generalize, even if someone is a little better in a particular thing, like strength or diplomacy or whatever you're doing, it's a good idea to make sure that you won't fail automatically every check you encounter. Not only will it probably make you lose the game, but it won't be a lot of fun for someone if every time they enter a room, they automatically fail, they don't have to roll or make any checks at all. That being said, it's also important to focus on the end game. A lot of these type of games have a very steep curve when it comes to the end. Things will seem kind of easy for most of it, or you know, like you're just, you're barely managing to get through things, but then, when it gets to the end, there'll be a steep ramp up in difficulty. Whether this is because the final boss has been revealed or the final obstacle has come out, these will often require you to really test your limits. Now the downside is once you're so far into the game, you usually don't have a way to go back and improve yourself. So it's important that you know kind of what the end goal will be or what the end game is and just make sure that you're preparing for it as the game goes on, not just answering each problem as it arises. Something else important to remember though is that losing is okay, especially in a game like this. In my opinion, the average co-op game isn't meant to be won 50% of the time. I think more often than not, you're expected to lose and you're expected to go back and do the same campaigns again this time with a, a fresh set of eyes. In fact, some of them are literally designed that way. So it's really important that you aren't downtrodden by it. Don't think that you did something wrong just because you lost. In some cases, you might have not had a chance either way. But if you find that you are winning or losing a particular co-op game too often, it might be time to manage your level of communication within the party. A lot of these type of games don't have very specific rules about what you can or can't reveal to other players. Maybe you can show your hand. Maybe you can't say things about particular cards. It's usually not very clear. I've seen co-op games where everyone played with their hands revealed, and I've seen people play the same games where they barely talked at all. Both of these options are completely valid, but it's important that you discuss with your party and your group ahead of time what everyone is comfortable with. If everyone wants to play with information revealed to make the game a little easier, that's fine. But if they want to play with things being more secretive to make sure the game is still a challenge, you kind of need to accept that. If half the party is being secretive and the other half are being open, it's kind of going to turn into a mess. And in the same vein, it's important to take control in some cases and also know when not to take control. This is a co-op game, remember, so everyone should be involved. It, even though it is a puzzle 
And in some cases in co-op games, there's a very literal solution you have to do to win. If you don't do it, and you don't do it fast enough, you will almost definitely lose. That being said, it's still important that everyone feels involved, everyone gets a chance to do something. If someone is taking their turn and they want to do something, it might seem better to tell them not to and to go and do something completely different and to basically have them follow your plan. But at the same time, you are playing a game with the intent of having fun. Make sure that you understand the level of comfort everyone has with that kind of a play style. If people are fine with someone taking command and kind of leading the charge, that's great. But that's not always going to be the case. So just be careful. Most importantly, just make sure everyone at the table is having fun. This has been my pep talk. If you have any questions or other tips and suggestions for co-op games, leave them in the comments and I'll be glad to read them. Otherwise, thanks for watching.